There is an inexorable force in the cosmos where time and space converge. Jim, it's called a black hole because its gravitational force is so strong that not even light can escape. Welcome to STEM Punks. Welcome to STEM Punks. STEM Punks is a bi monthly podcast intended to bring science, technology, engineering, engineering. Wow. straight to your ears from our STEM Punk studio. Hang on, we'll take you for a ride that includes a whole lot of fun and a little bit of education on the side. Stay tuned. Nice to be in orbit. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the STEM Punks Podcast. My name is Joe Garut and I will be your host. And with me as always is my buddy Stembot. Hello Stembot. Hello Joe. Stembot, there's been a lot of media attention about what is described as the first picture of a black hole. Will you please give us a description of a black hole? According to astronomer Shep Dolman, the leader of the 200 person team that took the picture, a black hole forms when enough matter simply squeezes into a small enough volume that its self-gravity cannot prevent itself from squeezing into an infinite point of density. And around that infinite density point is the event horizon. That's the point where gravity is so strong, even light can't escape. You know, I've heard that, Stembot, and it made me wonder, without light, how can we take a picture of it? Well, luckily our co-producer Michael Friend knows a guy. Let's go to that interview. Okie dokie. So, today in the studio we have Tom Harrop. Tom, did I get your name correct there? That is absolutely correct. All right. Tom, tell us a little bit about who you are. I'm a college professor uh, in media from uh, Denver, Colorado, and uh, graduated from Brooks Institute of Photography uh, with a master's degree, and I'm a former NASA photographer. So it sounds to me like you're the perfect one to uh, ask a few photography questions as I'm curious about this black hole picture that we just uh, are seeing in the media here lately. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's sort of what I've spent my life doing. Photography is imaging, you know, has been uh, my entire career. So my first question is, is this really a photograph? A photograph in the way that I would think of using a camera and taking a photograph? It's not. It is an approximation based on a huge amount of data. Basically, what we're seeing is a silhouette of the black hole against the energy around it. None of the photograph is taken in what we would normally call photographic light. It's not visible light. That part of the electromagnetic spectrum is not energetic enough to make it here clearly. So they did this in the X-ray spectrum, which is more energetic and has shorter wavelengths, so it passes through space more easily. So something like that, do they have one location where they're taking that photograph from, this quote-unquote photograph? No, it's, uh, for me it's more useful to think of it like a huge scanner. Uh, the telescope is the size of the Earth, and it has eight telescopes that uh, are all hooked together by an atomic clock. And as the Earth turns, each of those telescopes takes a picture, so they end up with a huge amount of sort of data bits. And as the Earth scans, it's just like a scanner moving across a document on the glass. It is picking up parts of this image, uh, and then those have to be reassembled. So there's eight different locations. They're all taking these bits of information. So that sounds to me like a lot of data. It's an enormous amount of data. It's 5.4 petabytes they ended up with, which is the scientific term for a uh, really big pile of data. <laughs> a petabyte would be 10,000 gigabytes. This image used 55,000 times more data than any light-based camera. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. Tom, thank you so much for being on the show today. I really enjoyed visiting, and I wish we had more time to talk about this. Maybe another show. Um, I am looking forward to it. I, I love your podcast, and uh, I'll be uh, happy to be on anytime you can use me. Tom and I talked for another 20 minutes and could have gone on for hours. One of the things that was really impressive to me was Tom had an answer for my question about why doesn't light escape a black hole. I didn't think it had any mass. Tom had this answer when I posed it to him. Light, although we describe it as a wave, is also a particle. Because it's a particle, I think that makes it easier to understand that gravity can affect it because it 
in some sense, it's kind of a physical thing. Because it's a particle, it's a physical thing. Right. So what we've learned today is while this photograph differs from the photograph of the family picture on the wall, what we can take away is that our technology is so great that we can interpret data through several different telescopes and a massive bank of computers to see something that is over 53 million light years away. And that's pretty cool. Thank you for listening to the STEM Punks podcast. Say goodbye, STEMBot. Goodbye, STEMBot. The STEM Punks podcast is brought to you by Cottywample Creative. A Cottywample is a purposeful journey towards a vague destination. Whether it's this galaxy or another, Cottywample can be there to create art for you. And by our patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much, and welcome to Murray Sampson, our latest patron. I also want to do one final shout-out to Tom. He's got some information about a book of his. Um, I do have a book called Learn by Doing Photography that's available on Amazon and then there's an accompanying website called lbdphoto.com Thanks Tom. Now finally I just want to let you guys know that next month we're going to switch the episodes up. We'll do the short episode first on the 10th and the long episode on the 20th. That's because our Science of Cooking episode is going to be a doozy. Stay tuned for that. Bye now.